imagine yourself lying on a stretcher being rushed into the ER. With pain tearing through your right shoulder, you wait eagerly for the doctors and nurses to come treat you and ease your pain. You hear the shuffling feet and the muffled voices of other patients around you, but no sound of any medical staff coming to your aid because all the nurses were occupied with other patients. Then, a nurse comes over and notifies you that there are other patients still waiting to receive their treatment and that you would need to wait for available medical staff to take you in. By then, your pain has become unbearable. You start to question whether your current condition would escalate into more severe complications. Before the National Health Insurance in Taiwan today, labor insurance, government employee insurance, and farmers insurance were programs people applied for. The three main insurances only covers 60% of the people, while the National Health Insurance Program today covers 99% of the people in Taiwan, including Taiwanese people who work outside of the country and workers who work in, work in Taiwan. While many people admire Taiwan's low-cost health care, Taiwan's shortage of medical staff and the issue with the fee-for-service payment system needs to be fixed. When you think about it, Taiwan actually has a very high usage of health care. People in Taiwan visit medical institutions whenever they encounter a small problem like a small flu or a simple cold. Whether it is at a hospital or at a clinic, I am sure all of you have experienced waiting in long lines just to see a doctor. Together, the high usage of healthcare with the shortage of medical staff makes it extremely difficult for people to get the best quality healthcare. So why is fixing a lack of medical staff important? First. A shortage means that many medical professionals will have to work long hours, which means that the quality of care will go down. In addition, the fatigue that comes with working long hours can result in medical errors such as an overcrowded emergency room or incorrect treatment. Not only that, if, a lack, if there is a lack of medical staff, most of them will choose to work in urban areas. According to Dr. Lin, a member of the National Health Insurance Screening Group, the government is trying to encourage medical professionals to serve in rural areas. However, because there isn't even enough physicians in urban areas, it is extremely difficult to do so. The fee-for-service system is when the physician's salary is based on the number of patients they treat. Physicians tend to spend a brief time with each patient so that they can get through more patients throughout the day. And they do this because they only get a small percentage of the money provided by the Bureau of National Health Insurance, the BHNI, to the hospitals. Furthermore, the BHNI does not respect the expertise of physicians. For example, the cost of an endo endo endotracheal tube insertion is around 700 NT, which is significantly less than the cost of fixing a pipeline, which is around 2,000 NT. The purpose of an endotracheal tube is to save a life, which involves much more risk than fixing a pipe. Does that mean that a pipe is worth more than someone's life? Second, the BHNI does not take into consideration the risks involved in providing medical care. For example, the payment given to a physician for the delivery of an infant is around 3,000 NT dollars. Because, however, a mistake results in the lawsuit of millions of NT dollars. Because of the low payment associated with the high risk job of a physician, Many high-risk medical departments, like obstetrics, lack medical staff. I have volunteered at a hospital in Zhanghua for over a year now, and every time I volunteer there, I get upset at the lack of attention the nurses give the patients and their family members. For example, there was this one time the patient's mom asked the nurses and the staff members to help her push the hospital bed up to the second floor because she wasn't strong enough to do so. However, the nurses and staff members got upset at her and told her that they couldn't leave their stations and that she needed to take care of it herself. I thought about ways to increase the number of medical staff so that the events like this will occur less frequently. The main solution I came up with is to decrease the patient to medical staff ratio by increasing the enrollment of medical students and by decreasing resignations. The increase in enrollment quota for medical students will help fill up empty positions in hospitals, especially departments that incur high risk and long hours, such as surgery and internal medicine. Well, you might be thinking, well, even if the number of medical students increased, it doesn't mean that they will choose to go into those high risk departments. And you're right. That's exactly what Dr. Ye pointed out. I quote Dr. Ye, a doctor of internal medicine. New medical staff will be in class
plan to choose low-risk specialties such as dermatology. In addition, current medical staff in those departments will object to raising the enrollment quota because they will increase the already growing competition between them. Like Dr. Yeh stated, many people may choose to enter popular specialties and leave the high-risk specialties still short on medical staff. However, because the Ministry of Health and Welfare set a quota for each field, once that quota is filled, the medical students will be forced to go into specialties that are less popular and lack more medical staff. Therefore, increasing the medical student quota still remains one of the most viable options to addressing the issue of the staff shortage. The second way is to decrease resignations. Yu Shen Tai from Gaozhou Veterans General Hospital carried out stratification analysis as a way of determining whether salary significantly affected the relationship between work hours and turnover intention, which is when employees choose to switch jobs. Even though the table showed that both salary and work hours affected the relationship between turnover and tension, it was concluded that payment satisfaction did not significantly <coughs> affect the relationship between work hours and turnover and tension. While increasing the salaries may serve as an incentive to most physicians, decreasing the work hours is still much more effective. Now imagine again, the scenario mentioned earlier, but some things are different this time. You hear the sound of an ambulance ringing in your ears as you are being rushed to the ER. You feel a burning sensation in your right shoulder and you can hardly stay conscious. Physicians and nurses rush towards you to bring you in. Other medical staff steer aside to clear the way, setting up immediate treatment. You are assisted toward the hospital bed that was already set up for your arrival. After being transferred to the bed, physicians are ready to begin examining you and begin your treatment. As the number of medical staff increase and the reformation of the fee-for-service payment system takes place, the quality of health care will be significantly improved. Together, let's take a step towards making quality health care Helen's glory and pride. Thank you.